Mega Man X7. This revolutionary classic happens to be the step forward taken by Mega Man X in bringing the series to the next level. All thanks to its innovative 3D level designs and a thrilling, original story that kept you guessing throughout. You know the game's got some remarkable impact when it has such a vocal fanbase that spoke up for it. The game is so powerful that a weakling such as myself could never master the strength to play it. But instead, what I can do is find another way to judge this game for what it does best, without playing it somehow. And I think I found the ideal aspect. The voice acting. My friends are all really skilled reploids. Yep, even a backseater like myself can appreciate how outstanding the vocal performances are in this game. Not like those fake semi-British English that we get in X4. These are some legit performances. Voice is so good in fact that the cast was even hired for ZX Advent. That's when you know we got some killer acting. No way! The Mavericks in particular really stuck out with their unique vocal drafts. Each of them has such distinct personalities that make them so interesting compared to the overly stoic idiots that we get from the other games. So let's go ahead and pay them the overdue tribute that they crave. This is the top 8 Mega Man X7 Maverick. It's voice acting. <laughs> Something about Flame Higher Not has always struck me in a curious way. As in, what were the developers' thought process when they made this Maverick? Compared to the others, he was given a rather… unique introduction. Being kind of reluctant about surrendering himself to the Hunters, only to later reveal that he's slowly breaking down. Seems like the developers were so proud of this scene that they didn't even change his dialogue. He pretty much says the same thing to all three Hunters. I will say that makes him sympathetic in a niche manner, if not for how grating his voice is. Oh, oh, it's you that's causing my suffering. I know we're supposed to be convinced that he's suffering, but goddamn, at least give me a good reason to not hate him for it. His voice is so hard to listen to, it might as well be toned to chalkboard scratches. Knowing he shares X's voice doesn't make it much better. So you're the big cheese. If anything, it just gives me more reason to want to see the sneering nuisance get his comeuppance. Had Hainar's voice actually been pleasant at some point, maybe I'd actually feel something for him other than dismissal. You might think I'd pretend to stroke this dude's ego for the sake of a joke, but I can't justify this guy. He just sucks. That's that. <laughs> Gangaroo is a pretty playful dude, ain't he? Honestly, I think the idea of a right armor maverick being based off of a kangaroo is actually pretty clever. To complement that, however, they went about making this guy as childish as possible. And it's reflected perfectly by him being the premature second half of Kangaskhan, who whines over not getting his own Pokédex entry. Destroy! Destroy! Look at me! Look at me! Look at me! Stop it! Stop it right there! For once, I agree with you, X. If you really want the full experience, you should fight this guy with Axel. It'll be like another day nursing at the kindergarten. But you're acting like a kid right now! Or you could fight him with zero and get some… interesting results. Hey, calm down, or you'll have to take a time out in the corner. Next! <laughs> so, Snipe and Eater. Compared to the others, this one is definitely supposed to be more enigmatic. He talks all this semi-philosophical dribble in the voice of a marijuana dealer. Some of his dialogue with Zero are even supposedly meant to tie into the Zero series. Blue, the lies that have infested the earth. Red, those destroyed and sealed away forever. Yeah, it's fine if you want to play it like that, but see, you're an X7 maverick. The fact that you're here talking with this dialogue in this voice isn't gonna make it easy for anyone to take you seriously. I need to get good data on you, boy. Ah well, at least I got to listen to him talk about the anals of history. Yes, I think him saying anal was funny. And so should you. <laughs> Does anyone remember this guy? I suppose in X7's gallery of odd as hell clowns, Win Krorang just kinda… sinks behind the others. He's not particularly remarkable in terms of design, and his voice is mediocrely passable at best. I struggle to really find something interesting to talk about when it comes to this guy. But thanks to fanfical entertainment, I've finally been enlightened over what makes this avian so special. See, the other mavericks face the hunters for some kind of revenge or just out of sheer pleasure of battling and doing crime. What does this guy fight? I want to see! That's right. All this time, Krorang just wanted to get surgical implants for his eyes. The poor guy's been fighting the hunters blind all this time and we didn't even realize it. He was really a selfless fighter who just wanted to be able so that he can observe the best of what his opponents can achieve. 
So many people failed to realize that, but hopefully with my help, we managed to raise awareness for this truly tragic maverick. <laughs> Soldier Stone Kong To be honest, this guy is actually kind of okay. Like, for real, his voice is kind of derpy, but the delivery of his lines are just underplayed enough that it's not too silly or boring. His dialogue also reflects his identity as a battle-hardened warrior pretty well, given that his conversations aren't all that drawn out or try too hard to be smart. They're pretty straight to the point about what they had to do as opponents on the battlefield and respected each other as such. Only the victors will be viewed as righteous in the eyes of history. Yeah, there's not really much to make fun of with this guy. Standing next to the others, he is objectively decent. Congrats, Stone Kong. You get the I Don't Suck Award. Let's put it there. <laughs> I'm the head honcho for crying out loud. You, I'm gonna. <laughs> Not exactly a stranger to the other Mavericks, Splash Warfly is home to some cheesy ass dialogues and interactions. Even his voice sounds like the fish grandma from SpongeBob if she lived long enough to be mechanized. <laughs> you made it this far. Maybe the chocolate really did do wonders for a body. Yet despite all of this, he's not annoying somehow? Like Stone Kong, he's rather subdued compared to the likes of Hainar and Gangaroo. So I don't find his voice that irritating. Even his inflections and dialogue are actually pretty entertaining to listen to, so I unironically find him to be a pretty good goofy maverick. Well, you know, again, for Act 7. Rusted old machines should stay home and play with their toasters. I'm pretty sure that's a euphemism. It's it's beautiful. I have never seen or heard anything quite like it. Tornado Tanyan is a modern art masterpiece designed after an annoying piece of vegetation and given the vocals of a constipated German Mario. His voice is just incredible. The inflection is so overboard yet so perfectly timed. Everything he says to each of the hunters are so ridiculously eccentric and the hunters give such perfect responses that it's actually genius. It's just amazing how hilarious this maverick turned out. And the icing on the cake? Guess who shares his diaphragm? That's right, freaking zero. Piss on the voices all you want, but that range is not to be messed around with. Tanyan is not a good maverick, like at all. He's a complete mess that doesn't belong in an X game. And that's kind of why he's perfect for X7. With all the attempts this game made to create cool and threatening adversaries, they just fail in so many fundamental ways that it's just painful how disappointing they get. So why even pretend to have a redeeming quality? Why not just embrace the insanity and become the whole circus? The fact that this much effort was put into making Tanyan so pathetic honestly makes me think that someone in the team really divulges in the art in messing around and around. And all of that is why this beautiful cauliflower of disasters is the best part of X7. How long you gonna keep that up? Keep what up? You know people don't come here to watch you make this stupid video, right? They don't like me! They wanna see me get ripped apart in gratuitous detail! Wait, really? A guy burnt down an orphanage just because I didn't talk about the game they hate? Even though there's like a dozen other bigger channels whose long drove it to the ground and they could just watch those in-depth critiques instead? They don't care! They wanna see me torn apart more because I'm the quintessential bad Mega Man game! You brought this upon yourself when you decided to turn me into a running joke that nobody likes! If you just followed what everybody else does, those orphans wouldn't have died! Hey, 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 calm down, dude. Calm down. It's okay. I know you've been dealing with a lot of burden these past two decades. And at this point, you're just succumbing to society's perception of you. And while they're not completely wrong about how you turned out, I do think they are taking more aggression on you than you really deserve. You're not the reason this series fell apart to begin with, just a failed attempt at trying to put it back together. Truth to be told, I have a bit of a soft spot for rule breakers so long as they're willing to offer something worth looking back to. 
And with all the insanity your game brought into the table, you're not completely off the radar on that one. The only issue is that I don't find you worth playing whatsoever. But you know, maybe that sort of distance is what makes it easier for me to appreciate the joy that you did bring me. People find their own ways to embrace art no matter how subjective it can get. I may have been jaded by the general opinion and this video may have been a dumb joke to subvert what everyone else consider commonplace, but I still had fun with it. Which is more than what you usually get, right? Yeah, I I'm sorry man, I'm just not used to catching a break. I'm really glad someone did have fun with my game, even if it's not how it should have been. Well what can I say, guilty pleasures work in mysterious ways. So, now that your job here is done, how about we finally put this all to rest? Alright, I should be ready now. See you on the other side, mate. Farewell, sweet prince. Thanks for watching folks! This may have been an April Fool's crap fest, but I still put as much work into it as I could. If you… uh, enjoyed that, feel free to subscribe and let me know what you think. Now that this is over, I'd like to finally move out of the X series and set sail for other titles that deserve my attention more.